What's up guys, Kudokumi here, Big Papa K, K-Dog, the K-U, Doe, if you know what I mean. So, Happy New Year, first of all, to everybody. Uh, this video is supposed to be out on the 1st. Um, not only is it not out on the 1st, but I'm not recording it until the 2nd, and then I have to edit it, so it might not even be out until the 3rd. But what better way to start out the year on the Kudokun channel? Now you may want to strap yourselves in, because seeing as this is the New Year's update, there's probably going to be a lot of info in this video, guessing it's not going to go for less than 30 minutes, and you guys know how long-winded I am, so possibly 40 minutes to an hour, but we'll see how it goes. Personally, I've got myself some hot tea here to keep myself awake. Uh, I don't recommend you watch this video directly, because unless you're just absolutely enamored with my adorable face, you're probably not going to get much out of the screen. So. Uh, Maybe play some video games. Um, God forbid you put on some League of Legends or something. Now with that being said, we are going to get the channel news out of the way because I know a lot of you just come here for the channel news. So even though we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, I just want to get the info out to people who want to know stuff that's going on with the channel as quickly as possible. So the first thing I want to talk about is this game right here. Uh, we actually got sent a game last month by a company, and I was really looking forward to looking at this, and uh, I still plan on looking at it. In fact, I promised that there would be a video about this out in December, and it didn't happen. So what's going to happen instead is this will be the next video that comes out on the channel. There will not be a single other video, y sports related or otherwise, until a video on that gets done. So. I hope you're looking forward to it. Uh, it's a game based on old sort of Final Fantasy-ish tropes, so if you were a fan of Final Fantasy during like Final Fantasies 1 through 4, I think you're going to get a kick out of it. Uh, hopefully you stay tuned. Next up though, I do want to talk about why Swartz. I really liked the system I had in place last year where we just took one set and focused on it every month, and we're going to go back to that, starting of course with January set of No Game No Life, which is one of my favorite animes of all time, and I was so hyped that it got a Weiss Swartz set, and then I didn't get a chance to look at it. So this month we're gonna start up with Weiss Swartz again, and we're gonna start with No Game No Life. What we're gonna do is the four video a month uh, sort of set that I had going on last year. So it'll be the trial deck, probably a set review, and then two deck profiles unless something else happens. But count on that, uh, trial deck, set review, two deck profiles, and then we'll try and stagger that to about one a week so that it doesn't get too repetitive. Speaking of big card games on the channel, I was a part of a podcast that talked about the new MLP set. I don't know if you've seen it or not. If you haven't, I'll try to leave a link to it down in the description below. Uh, do keep in mind that I don't talk in it too much, even though I somehow talk in it a little bit too much at some points. But um, I do plan on doing my own set review because it is a really interesting set and uh, I actually for a while thought that the MLP card game was dying but I actually think they're doing some interesting stuff with it so I'm going to try and go back and uh, talk about some MLP stuff again. I can't guarantee it'll be a lot of stuff but I do plan on doing at least a deck profile and a set review of the new set. The other big thing I should talk about with the channel is Metamorphosis. No, Metamorphosis isn't dead. Uh, if, if you think Metamorphosis died, you're probably new to the channel. Uh, I do have a slight habit of starting series and then not continuing them for a while, but the one thing with me is I never stop something. It's just things go on very long hiatuses uh, depending on my mood and what's going on in my social life, so that's all that happened with Metamorphosis. Um, this next set we're about to talk about is probably the biggest set in all of Naruto CCG. It completely changed what the metagame would be for the rest of Naruto's lifespan. So I am looking forward to talking about it. It's going to be a big video. Uh, I do plan on trying a few little skits and gimmicks and stuff with it, but I'll, I'll try not to make it too obnoxious. But stay tuned for that because that will be coming out sometime this month. Now, with the big card game stuff out of the way, uh, what we have to talk about is what the new schedule is going to be going forward. Uh, I want to look at making videos more often. Obviously, take that with a grain of salt, because uh, I've said that over these last 10 years, I've said that over and over and over again, and uh, very few times have I delivered. But normally what will happen is I'll make very consistent videos, like four to five videos a week for like two months, 
and then I'll just take like a five month hiatus where I don't make anything. So what we're going to be doing this time is I'm going to try and keep it to two videos a week. We'll do one Weiss Swartz video a week and then one non Weiss Swartz video a week. That way Weiss Swartz isn't completely taking over my channel, but I am going back and doing it again because honestly I do miss it. Uh, Why Swartz is one of my favorite games to build decks for. It's one of my favorite games to play. And Trade Cards Online is still alive. Uh, honestly, I'm not even that mad about it. Um, we made all those preparations for it to die, and I was fully prepared for it to die, but I never really wanted it to. Now, that's not saying that it's safe forever. Um, from what I heard, they did successfully sell the company to another company, and the other company is just keeping the website up. So it might not be alive forever, but it's still alive now, which is cool. Maybe we can get a couple of more card games and chills out of it. Speaking of card games and chill, there was a special stream that was supposed to happen last month, and it didn't happen because of uh, financial reasons. But financially, I should be getting back on track this month, especially with tax returns coming right around the corner. So... Uh, what we're going to do is push it to next month, because if you don't know what happens next month, next month is my birthday. So what we'll do is we'll take what I was going to do for the special Christmas stream and just move it to my birthday. And uh, I still don't want to tell you guys exactly what it is, because I think it'll be a really neat surprise. But um, next month, we should have some more information on that. And I hope you stay tuned. Now that we have all of the channel news out of the way, that's really going to be it. If you were just here for channel news, don't want to know about anything else, then uh, feel free to uh, go ahead and skedaddle out of here. Uh, that's going to be it for channel news. And if anything else comes up, you should know about it in next month's update, if one happens. And thank you so much for watching. Now, for anyone who's still here, I have a fairly big update to make, and that is I will be working on a new project this year. Uh, the project will be a teaching channel for Japanese. Now, we all remember that the last time I tried to teach Japanese, it didn't go over that well. I don't think a single one of the videos broke 100 views, which I understand that uh, my popularity has waned quite heavily and that I'm not quite getting the 1,000 views per video that I used to get, but getting like 40 views on a video is still pretty, still pretty disheartening. So... What I'm going to do is work on a new channel uh, based around a completely new concept. It's not going to be related to Kurukun at all. It's going to be called Shio Kosho, and I'll probably have an image of it here somewhere. Essentially, it's going to be a children's program that teaches Japanese. I think that the children's market is really good right now. Um, I finally got some experience teaching children Japanese this last year, if you didn't know. Um, I've been teaching at a college where they essentially let anybody of any age come in and learn languages. So uh, I've been teaching kids as young as about 8 to 10 years old, and I've actually been really enjoying it, and I think I'm pretty good at it. So I am banking a lot on this Shio Kosho project going over really well. It's going to feature some stuff that I've never really dealt with before. It's going to have a slight animation. I'm not sure how heavily I want it to be animated in the beginning, but eventually it's going to be a fully animated um, video series. And uh, the way it's going to work is there's going to be a lesson every single week, and then every single day after that, there's going to be a new small video where um, essentially it'll be using the stuff from the lesson for that week uh, in context. So there'll be like a flashcard show where... Um, Let's go through and uh, go through flashcards, and then there will be a small segment where we talk about um, the writing system and such, and uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be about a 25-minute lesson, and then every day after that, there's going to be a 5-10 to 10 minute video. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my god, that's crazy, Kudo. You can't even, you can't even make consistent uh, videos for this channel. How are you going to keep up on another channel? But here's the thing. I actually think uh, I've got a system worked out pretty well for Shio Kosho, where I can dedicate one day completely to it. Um, essentially every Sunday, uh, I have a lot of free time, so what I'll do is on Sunday I'll make the seven videos for the week, and then maybe an extra video if I think I have time, and then um, I'll just set them to upload one per day. So. Like, honestly, it's a pretty huge leap, but I'm actually banking a lot on this Shio Kosho thing. Uh, I know that 
I know that it doesn't seem like uh, the most logical step. Uh, obviously, my Japanese videos didn't do that well, and uh, um, when it comes to consistently uploading videos, I'm not really the best. But um, I really believe in this project. In fact, uh, over the next five years, I'm actually counting on Chio Kosho being a, like a mainstay Japanese thing. And again, that sounds crazy considering the circumstances, but um, I'm really buckling down and counting on this being a really big thing. And in five years, I'd like there to be books and uh, I'm going to do blog posts, and I'm essentially counting on Chio Kosho becoming my new full-time job, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So yeah, if you're interested in Chio Kosho, I'll probably leave a link to the YouTube channel down below, even though it hasn't started yet. It will start probably at the end of this month or at the beginning of next month, because I'm still working on how to animate and stuff. And that's a very, very new thing for me because not only am I bad at drawing, but I hate drawing. So I can't guarantee it'll be animated great, but I can't just go to an artist every single time I need like a little frame animated or something. So I have to learn to do it on my own. And that is something I'm gonna be dedicating a lot of time to. Now, me announcing a new channel might sound like the craziest thing of all time, but what if I told you that I'm doubling down and there's not going to be not one, but two new channels that I'll be updating uh, this year? Uh, oh boy, this is going to be an interesting one to announce, but essentially uh, I've decided after a lot of time and thinking and talking to people that I do actually want to follow through with making a new channel and uploading non-card game videos to that channel. So if I talk about anime, video games, manga, uh, anything unrelated, blogs, whatever, I'm going to be keeping it off of the Kudokun channel from now on and putting it on the new channel. Though the two will be connected. It's, this isn't going to be like Shio Kosho where it's a completely new project, I think. I want to call the new channel Kudo After Hours, and everything that I upload not card game related will go on that channel. And my plan for that channel is to do one video per week. So essentially I'll be making three videos a week that are Kudokun related. We'll be doing one Y Swartz video, one non Y Swartz video but still card game related, and then one video that isn't related to either of them. I think I can keep up three videos a week. Uh, God help me if I can't, but I have a lot of faith that I will be able to, and all of this should be starting next week, so I'll be leaving a link to that in the description too. It might not be up there immediately because I haven't made the channel yet, but when I do make it, it will be down below, so if you want to talk to me on Discord or something, uh, let me know, and I'll see if I can get you a link to the channel if you decide not to come back here, and hopefully that goes over pretty well. Now, some people might be wondering why I've decided to open a new channel after all of this because I was pretty hesitant on it. I was saying that I just wanted everything to be uploaded here because it's a lot easier for me and it makes a lot more sense to me because if I'm only one person making these videos it makes more sense for it all just to be in one place. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, I actually want to talk about some other stuff that I think would be a little bit weird to upload here um and that thing being of course <laughs> uh anybody who knows me is gonna know that a lot of the video games i play have a lot of uh sexual elements uh, i know that was a really heavy thing to just drop on you guys but uh, i play games like senran kagura criminal girl so on and so forth and uh, a lot of these games are games that i've been really uncomfortable talking about on this channel because this is also a channel where i talk about like the My Little Pony card game. <laughs> so I think that's a, just a really weird thing to just drop uh, here on the channel. So what I've decided to do is make another channel where I will hopefully have more freedom to talk about things that are a, a bit heavier <laughs> um, like that. Like if I decide to make a video about Criminal Girls or Shenron Kagura, it would just be a lot easier for me to openly do that stuff on a new channel and not keep it uh, completely on this channel. Plus, I think a lot of the people who come here for card games don't want to get spammed with things that aren't card games, and I've decided to start respecting that a little bit more, so this is only going to be a card game channel from now on. I'm not going to take any of the old videos down, but going forward, card games, 
and then on the new channel probably kudo after hours i'm still kind of uh, on the name but on that channel we'll be talking about other stuff now don't think I'm just uploading like a hentai channel like for those of you that are a bit uh, awkwardly scared off by the fact that I mentioned like sexualized video games uh, I want to make it perfectly clear that I'm not talking about a channel where I only upload that kind of stuff there's plenty of other video games that I want to talk about there's uh, anime that I want to talk about that after a, a little bit of consideration I've decided to maybe start busting into the uh, anime discussions a little bit uh, I've been very hesitant on talking about the anime thing as well, almost as hesitant as I was to open up a new channel in the first place, because I don't like the anime community here on YouTube. I'm sorry, it has to be said. A lot of them are very, very unbearable people to try and talk to. But I've decided to maybe try that out as well. And again, I think all of that stuff would be a little awkward here. And if I talk about it there, then I also have the freedom to talk about some other stuff. Like, if I were to make a video about like the jiggle physics in the girls boobs of Senran Kagura here or if I were to talk about criminal girls and how like you essentially torture girls to level them up and some of the girls look like lollies that that could be a little much for some of my viewers and uh, not only that but one thing that I'm a little bit terrified of is if I'm making a new channel with content that's aimed at teaching kids and uh, I make videos like that talking about girls jiggle physics and uh, games that have lollies in them. Whew. Oh boy, I could just see the allegations now. <sighs> that would be really rough. So I'm going to try and keep the two separate. Uh, essentially, it's going to be Shio Kosho on this side and then Kudo Kun and Kudo Kun After Hours here on this side. And even though that is still a possibility and uh, some allegations might come up, some really awful stuff might be said about me. I think this is the direction I want to go. And again, I will talk about why I'm so uh, heavy on this. I keep saying heavy. Do I say heavy a lot? Uh, why I'm so serious about this uh, when we get a little bit further into the video. So let's talk a little bit about what happened to me last year. Um, for those who don't know, I don't know how you could not know at, by this point, um, as I talked about it a few times already, but uh, essentially some stuff happened and I was homeless for a few months. Uh, if you feel bad for me, don't feel bad for me at all. Trust me, it's not the kind of homeless that people think about where like I'm starving and I don't have a place to sleep at night. Uh, that's not exactly the homeless I'm talking about. Uh, I was still working a, um, a pretty comfortable job making about $1,000 a year. year. Year making about a thousand dollars a month and uh, I found a bench right outside of a store that I could sleep at and it was uh, surprisingly comfortable not like, obviously not as great as having four walls and a bed but <laughs> it was it was pretty fine that's not what I want to talk about though at the end of that um, a, a bag with all of my uh, important goods got stolen so my Nintendo switch got stolen my 3ds got stolen um, pretty much all of my electronics and my Switch game collection, which my collecting games for my Switch was the thing that was keeping me sane during the whole thing, but that ended up getting stolen. So um, uh, I went through a pretty dark period there, and then I got a little bit complacent when it came to making YouTube videos. Like even after I got back into a place and uh, I did have the free time to start making videos again, I got a little bit too comfortable and I ended up just spending a lot of my time like sleeping and um, uh, playing video games, doing that kind of stuff. You know, one of the things that I did at the end of last year, uh, the League of Legends season was ending and I, I dedicated a lot more time than I care to admit to uh, increasing my league rank. Now, for those of you who are fortunate enough to have not played League of Legends, let me explain what going up the ladder in League of Legends is like. Now let's say in one day you play six matches, and uh, matches are about 40 minutes long or so, and then you have to count a bit of downtime in between the matches. So let's say it's about five hours of your time that you spent in doing these six matches. Now you win four matches, and you lose two matches. Now the four matches you win are very hard fought, you do really well, you get these crazy good scores, and then in the two you lose, one of them one of the kids in the middle of the match, 15 minutes or so in, says, uh, sorry guys, uh, my mom says I have to go to bed. And then they log off. And then you're 4v5. 
and then somebody else on your team decides because it's impossible for you guys to win he's gonna afk too so now it's 3v5 and then you lose and then you go into another match where somebody really wanted to play top and then didn't get top so instead of just playing normally they pick gnar and they run down mid lane killing themselves over and over again spouting in all chat narco pee pee over and over and over again and your bottom lane is losing and you end up losing that match as well so essentially you've put about five hours of uh time into league of legends and you have uh six matches played but because you won four and lost two and you get the pretty much the same amount of points gained or lost uh every time you win or lose a match regardless of the circumstances uh you've made about an hour and a half worth of progress after playing for five hours now some of you might see how this could be just a little bit maddening <laughs> it's uh it is not a fun trip i i don't i don't wish that on my worst enemy but god it's it's a game that I'm just so invested in, you know? It's it's gambling. It is literally gambling, but instead of money, you're gambling your time. That is it exactly. You just throw an hour in, and you pull the lever, and then maybe you'll win, maybe you'll lose. Who knows? And that's what I spent a lot of my time doing. That was a tangent. I apologize. Let's get back to talking about what I've been up to. So... I was dedicating a lot of time to that. I wasn't getting any videos out, really, except for Metamorphosis. And um, then C December happened, and I had a lot of special stuff planned for December. Like, I had that special stream I was talking about, which will be happening next month. I'm telling you guys, it's gonna happen. And, you know, I just sort of fell apart on, on December because um, uh, I had to go back to my hometown, and there was a lot of stuff I was doing with teaching... I had some, like, tutoring lessons that I was going through and stuff, so... Uh, it just wasn't a very good month to make videos in. And, uh, I ended up not making any videos. Which... Ah, it's great. It's, it's the Kudo-kun way. But, anyways, uh, December's over now. And, um... For anybody who's curious about how my teaching is going, it's going good. We've got two weeks left at the college. And then um, the classes that I do for free here uh, locally in town are going to start back up this week. So very fun there. And then hopefully I can convert some people to being Shio Kosho fans and they can just watch Shio Kosho and learn there. That's the genius about Shio Kosho is if I market it towards kids, then not only will kids learn from it, but most adults who are into anime are also into, like, children's cartoons. So they'll probably tune into and learn a lot. So honestly, if you just make a program directed at kids, you get the entire spectrum of people learning from it. It's genius. I don't know why more people aren't doing it. But that's how the teaching is going. And then uh, work is, um... Work is kind of falling apart. So for those who don't know, uh, I won't say exactly where I work, but let's just say I'm an overnight cook at a place where I, uh, I make a specific kind of food. And I was working together with somebody who had to leave in December. Um, some stuff was going on with his brother. Uh, his brother ended up getting pretty serious cancer and they had to move to Mississippi. So he's gone and I got a new person and uh, things at work have not been going super well. So first of all, this person that I'm working with, he's hes a really great guy, okay? I don't want you guys to think poorly of him, but he knows almost no English, and he's a very hard person to communicate with, and he's not as good at the job as my other partner. So that's creating a few problems. Now, on top of that, management staff have completely given up on the restaurant that I'm at. And it's really depressing how poor a shape the uh, the restaurant is in. Like, it's really, really bad. I don't even understand how it's so bad. Like, we were going weeks without new product being ordered. And then finally, when they started ordering stuff, they started ordering stuff like five times more than we actually needed. So now, when you go to the shelves with all of our inventory on it, 
not only are there shelves of inventory, but in front of them are more stacks of boxes of stuff that we're not using and we don't need. So instead of just going back and doing the orders properly, they're doing them in like the laziest way I could possibly imagine someone doing them. I could get into a bunch of other little stuff that's going on at work, but let's just say that work isn't going super well this year. And I've been there for three years, going on my fourth year. So here's where we get to probably the biggest news of the channel for this year. And that is New Year's resolutions. So I've really just got one big New Year's resolution this year. And get ready for it, because what I'm about to say is pretty crazy. And when I look back on this video in about eight months or so, I'll either look at it with pride or I'll be absolutely shattered as a human being. <laughs> but here's what's going on. My New Year's resolution for this year, the one thing that I'm working towards more than anything else is I want to find a way to sustain myself and quit my job. Quitting my job this year is going to be my New Year's resolution. And in order to do that, I need to find a way to make $1,200 every month to make sure that I have enough for my bills and uh, I can live pretty much as comfortably as I am now without uh, the job at the restaurant. <sighs> so this is one of the reasons that I'm going so heavy on Shio Kosho, because I believe firmly as, as much stuff that might be against Shio Kosho actually working as there is out there, like my Japanese isn't the best, I still struggle when I'm watching anime and stuff to understand everything that they're saying, uh, my reading could be a lot better. Uh, I know about 1,000 kanji, and it's about half of what you need to actually read video games. And there's a lot of stuff going against it, but the thing is, uh, I'm counting on it because this is the year that everything is falling apart just enough that I need to jump ship this year. It needs to happen. And I don't want to just jump into another retail job or some other job that I hate. You know, I'm 27 years old. I'm going to be 28 next month. Um, I don't want to just keep jumping between these jobs that barely keep my uh, afloat. If the Shio Kosho thing works out the way I think it will, over the next five years, I can have Shio Kosho in a place where it'll actually be a really big thing, and um, I'm really counting on that happening. So in order to supplement my time a little bit, uh, I... I went through a bit of a thing in December, like I said before, uh, and one of the things that I went through was a small bout of depression. Um, a bunch of things fell apart at pretty much the same time, and it was pretty rough. Like, I didn't really talk to anybody about it. I don't even think I talked to my girlfriend about it, to be completely honest, but um, I went through a little bit of depression. Uh, normally, I get over that stuff pretty quickly, but it was, it was a really rough, like, three or four days, and... To keep myself preoccupied and to perk myself up a little bit, I got into motivational speakers on YouTube. Pretty heavy into it, man. There is some... Ooh, Tony Robinson, man. You're my bro. But I also found somebody named Gary V. Now, a lot of you know who Gary V is. Some of you don't. Essentially, he's an entrepreneur, and he's a very, very straightforward entrepreneur. He's somebody who talks about being an entrepreneur and how to make money and um, he does all this stuff one of the things that he talked about was going to garage sales and picking stuff up for super cheap and then flipping it on places like ebay and now here's what's special about that i actually remember enjoying playing games where i, I love doing that kind of stuff i think it's really fun i remember back one of my one of my most prideful things is when i got into a little site called gaia online rest in peace gaia uh, I got into Gaia Online, and uh, when I started out, I had about 5,000 gold, and I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to make any more gold. And then I found the Marketplace, and I started doing some trading on the Marketplace. There was some stuff where something would be worth like 10,000 gold, and then somebody would post one up for like 2,000, so I would buy it, and then sell it for 8,000, and then I would have 8,000 gold, and then I would start doing that to the point where like I'd be at like a hundred thousand and then I'd see a new market of stuff where there would be like four things posted and they would all be worth like 10,000 gold each. So I would buy them all up and then put them all back up for 40,000 but then put one up for 20,000 to make it look like the market was at 40,000 and just all this crazy stuff I used to do uh, back with the Gaia Marketplace. And then that transitioned to some other games that I used to play like uh, 
I used to play a game called Hometown Story for the DS a lot, where essentially you did the exact same thing. You um, you bought items really cheap, and then you flipped them in your shop, and you made more money. I love that kind of stuff. I think it's really fun, and I think this might be a good year to try it out for myself. I went to the dollar store, and I found something for a dollar, of course, because it's a dollar store. You know how dollar stores work, don't you? <laughs> and uh, I checked it online, and it was selling for $11. <laughs> So I thought to myself, if I took that and sold it for $9, even after, like, fees, like eBay fees and PayPal fees and paying for shipping, I could still make about $6 off of it. That's like a $5 increase off of doing almost nothing. And I took that as a sign. So I'm going to be focusing on doing that a lot this year, because if I can figure out a way to make, like, $1,000 a month just doing that, then that will help so much in getting Shio Kosho off the ground and like really accelerating uh, Shio Kosho to a place where it can be my new sustainable income. So we'll have to see. But that's that's it. My main focus this year is going to be finding a way to quit my job. And after I quit my job, I will have so much more free time. It's not even funny. If I could just find a way to make enough income to quit my job and then that would give me another like eight hours a day to dedicate to doing other stuff i could make videos like this more frequently if i could find a way to make some more money off of these videos then that would help even more because i could pay for advertising for shio kosho it's an it's a machine and this year i am sink or swim going to figure out how that machine works and we're gonna make it happen this year now of course i've got some other smaller new year's resolutions um of course, I'd like to eat healthier. Uh, you'll notice that this isn't a soda. This would normally be a soda, but uh, nope, uh, it's it's tea. So I'm trying to be a little bit healthier this year. It's not going to take priority over the whole Chio Kosho thing, but you didn't see that. <laughs> what I'm going to do is if this thing works out, if I can find a way to quit my job and get some more free time and actually start sleeping at night instead of working through the nights, um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, starting a bit of a workout routine where I work out for about an hour a day. Okay, that'll be one of the hours. And then uh, on top of that, I'd really like to uh, maybe get my place cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> I'm hoping that maybe uh, when I get into something that isn't just a, a regular minimum wage job, um, my, my life itself will start to sort of clear up a bit, but that needs to get solved first. So Shio Kosho and then my personal health. And then uh, who knows, maybe my next New Year's resolution in about a year or so could be moving into an actual apartment and not living in a garage. So we'll see what happens. Now, I've been talking for about 40 minutes. I don't know how uh, compressed this will be when I actually start editing, but I've been talking for about 40 minutes and uh, this is a QA, and a so we should probably get to some questions. Question one. What are your favorite and least favorite Switch games? Also, are you going to go back to Weiss Swartz at some point? Well, we already answered the Weiss Swartz thing, so... Yeah, Weiss Swartz this month. Uh, hopefully you're looking forward to it. Now, as far as favorite and least favorite Switch games go, that is a toughie. So, here, here, here's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a couple of my favorite Switch games and a couple of my least favorite Switch games, and then I'll do a little bonus, because you're going to be a bit upset when I talk about some of my favorites and least favorites. Now, I really hate to be milk toast here. Um, this answer is probably not going to please a lot of people, but my favorite game on the Switch is still Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's still the game that I feel is the most polished, the best made game. And if I were to pick a second favorite, it would just be Mario Odyssey. Like, I know that's such a disappointing answer to come out of somebody like, especially me, who loves RPGs. But RPGs on the Switch have been really rough. At least from the ones that I've played, man. It has not been a good year for JRPGs. Now, again, this is going to make some people pretty upset because there's like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch and um, Octopath Travelers on the Switch. So I've got a lot of stuff to answer for. Uh, and here here it is. I'm going to give you my most disappointing games on the Switch too, just to, just to make that clear. And it's going to be Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Octopath Traveler. 
man, those games are not good. Uh, that's going to make some people upset, like I said before, because um, I'm sure anybody who likes JRPGs probably really liked Octopath Traveler uh, in particular. Octopath Traveler is not a good game. <laughs> it's a game that I'm going to have to talk about, and, and uh, I don't want to make this video like three hours long, so I don't want to talk about all the problems with Octopath Traveler, so... Uh, I'm just going to leave it there for right now. If you want to know more about Octopath Traveler, there will be a video up at some point on the second channel. Kudo After Hours still up on the name, but whatever my second channel is, I'll talk about it there. But I do not think Octopath Traveler came out as a good game, and I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a lot worse than people say it is. Um, it's still a, a passable game. It's a lot better than Octopath Traveler, but... JRPGs need to step up their game on the Switch. Uh, they have not been impressing me so far. <laughs> uh, now, a lot of people are going to be wondering why I didn't put uh, Smash up there. Smash can be number three. Smash is definitely top five favorite games on the Switch, but uh, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> Honestly, though, uh, JRPGs are what I've really been hungry for, and they're something that haven't been satisfied yet on the Switch. Uh, Smash Brothers is good. It's amazing. I put, like, a billion hours into it so far, but it's just it's just not scratching the itch of the kind of games that I want out of the Switch. So um, I want a really meaty JRPG that I can sink, like, 200 of my hours of my life into where I can just grind up, and I love the story and the characters and the setting and... It hasn't happened yet. So we'll see what happens there. Now, my least favorite games on the Switch. That's a really rough one. Because there's a lot of just straight out bad games that I've played on the Switch. Um, I think my least favorite game still is uh, that awful, awful Toho fighting game. I can't even remember the name of it. I think it was called Kabuto V Burst Battle or something. That game sucks real bad. <laughs> that game is really rough around the edges. Uh, like, I still bounce back between whether I think it's like a 2 out of 10 or a 3 out of 10, but either of those numbers is way, way too bad for a Switch game. And that's my least favorite title for the Switch so far. So maybe there will be some stuff on that a little bit later, but for right now, I'll move on. Uh, favorite game, Zelda Breath of the Wild, most disappointing game, Octopath Traveler, least favorite game, Toho, Kabuto, V, Burst Gundam Battle Wings, uh, something other. Have you considered doing other types of content, like reaction videos? All the time, actually. <laughs> so here's the thing with me. Uh, I actually love those kinds of videos. I like I like getting into the sort of like dark side fill, Wings of Redemption, uh, sort of uh, <laughs> drama-ish channels. You know, I talk about Chris Chan all the time. And I would love to talk about that kind of stuff. And when the politics thing was going on really heavy, I was actually considering for a while making reaction videos, uh, doing the whole um, feminist versus anti-feminist thing, uh, getting into the Trump versus Hillary thing, doing that kind of stuff. That was actually a serious thing that was going to happen on the channel. In fact, if you look back, one of the things that uh, I actually started making and that I never released to the public is um, I was making a video response to one of Digibrony's videos. Also, forgive me, my thing is going off because... Oh, gosh darn it, sorry. The girlfriend is bugging me right now. So anyways, one of the videos that's on my cutting room floor is a response video to Digibrony's video, um, How to Tell a Bad Anime in One Episode. And the video was titled, um, How to Tell a Bad Anime Reviewer in One Episode. So... Essentially, what it was about is Digibrony made this video where he essentially taught you how to look at, like, 15 minutes of an anime and judge whether or not the entire anime was going to be bad. And, um, I thought it was a really poorly made video. I thought a lot of the stuff he talked about didn't make a lot of sense. Like, one of the things he talked about is, um, there's this guy, and he's, like, he's looking down at his phone. or some kind of device. It might have been a video game system or something. And, uh, he's looking down at it, and then... Uh, the camera cuts to the floor, and then you hear a crash, and then, like, he's, like, on the floor. And it's really easy to tell what happened. He was looking down at something, like, it cut to the floor to show you that he wasn't looking where he was going, and then crash, and then he's, like, sitting on the floor. 
He was looking down at something, he bumped into something, and he fell. But Digibroni talks about that scene, and he's like, I don't even know what happened here. How was the audience supposed to tell what happened? <laughs> what? You do this for a living! Ugh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop. Now, the reason that I didn't uh, release that video, and the reason that I didn't get into the whole um, making video responses and doing that kind of stuff is... I felt like everywhere I was going, I was seeing people who were, who were doing that kind of thing. And it made me realize that, like, I, I don't really want to bring that into the channel, you know? I don't really want this to be a place where, like, you go and the newest video could be, like, um, why, why Trump was right about everything. <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying that I'm necessarily a Trump supporter or a Hillary supporter, but I'm just saying that everything else was getting so politicized and, like, sort of off-base um, that entertainment wasn't really that abundant on the channel. And I, I, anytime you come to my channel, I just want it to be like, hey, you know, there's a video out about a card game that I really like, or there's a video out about uh, a game that I've never heard of before. Like, let's just watch this and enjoy ourselves for a bit. I feel like just sitting down and enjoying something you like is something that a lot of people on the website moved away from. For a while, it was, you always had to release something that was either, like, negative criticism about somebody else, or it had to have your political views in it, or it had to include some kind of jab at feminists somewhere in it, and it's, it's really rough to just find videos where you get to hear somebody talk about a hobby you enjoy, and I decided that I wanted the channel to stay that, so I didn't get into it, um... Now, that isn't to say that that kind of stuff couldn't exist on a second channel. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, like, I, I want this channel to stay as pure as possible. If you come here, I, I won't be shoving some kind of opinion down your throats. I won't be getting into politics. I won't be, like, just knocking somebody else down uh, unless it's that one video where I had to knock somebody down. We know what we're talking about. Well, yeah, that had to happen. Oh, poor Six Ages Gaming. <laughs> so... That's what's happening there. Um, that's why I didn't get into uh, doing reaction videos and stuff. Um, I just wanted this to stay as fun as possible. And I hopefully achieved that to some extent in the times that I decided to make videos. Did you hear about Dragoborn shutting down? Ah, uh, did I hear about Dragoborn shutting down? You know what, dear viewer? Uh, I did hear about Dragoborn shutting down. And that was actually a video that I had planned to, that I never got around to making because of the whole end of the year complacency thing. Um, this year I'm definitely going to be talking about Dragonborn shutting down. And I mean, what can I say? What can a Kudo-kun say? Uh, it came out, I was like, hey, the marketing here kind of sucks. This is not going to do well. You should probably fix this. And uh, everybody came out and they were like, how dare you attack Dragoborn? Dragoborn's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. It's gonna overthrow Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering. And no one's gonna care about those card games anymore. And it's gonna be awesome. It's the best thing that Bushiroad's ever done. And my criticism of it, I remember very clearly, here is the awful thing that I said about Dragoborn. The game is really fun. It's unique and inventive. But the marketing sucks. And it's probably not going to do well because it looks a bit too much like Magic the Gathering. Oh, but the guy from Magic the Gathering worked on the game, Kudo, you don't understand. No, I know that the guy from Magic the Gathering worked on the card game. He made it too much like Magic the Gathering. So people who don't like Magic the Gathering aren't going to like this game. And people who do like Magic the Gathering are going to say this is too similar and not move over. And the game's not going to make any money. Just, that was it. That, that was that was my entire opinion. I was like, the game is fun and inventive and creative, but I don't think it's going to do well. And everybody said it wouldn't. Wait, where is it, guys? Where I don't know. Where, where'd it go? Where'd it go? It was just here. Where'd it go? 2019 Dragonborn. Where's my 2019 Dragonborn fans? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. But after all the crap I got over making fun of Dragoborn, part of me, part of me is a little bit like I told you so-ish, you know? Because I didn't deserve the crap I got over Dragoborn. And I called it from the beginning and nobody listened to me. Now where are we, guys? 
Why you gotta do this to us, man? I just want to be friends with other people in the community. I don't want to fight with anybody. I don't want to have negative opinions of anybody. I just want there to be good card games for me to make content about on my channel. I got nothing out of Dragonborn uh, failing. Nothing. If Dragonborn had been an amazing game, I could have made content for my channel, gotten some new viewers, gotten some new subscribers, made a little bit of money maybe. And it didn't. I got nothing to gain out of Dragonborn failing. I wanted it to succeed probably more than anybody else. But here we are. It didn't succeed. And now I just gotta wear the unfortunate crown of being right. It's sad, really. It really is. But we'll talk about that more in another video, I suppose. What is your favorite game of all time? That is a very loaded question. My favorite video game of all time is the original Paper Mario. Uh, I think I've said that before. Uh, my favorite game series is this one right here, Kingdom Hearts, baby. Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out soon. If you guys think I'm missing out on Kingdom Hearts 3, you've got another thing coming, man. Whew, I am so excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. You guys have no idea. Less than a month away. I cannot wait for Kingdom Hearts 3. It's going to be great. Though, I will give a special mention here to a game series called Atelier. Which, I think I've talked about this like a billion times on the channel. And eventually I'm going to sit down and just do videos on every single Atelier game that's ever come out. But for those of you who haven't heard about it, Atelier is this series of games where you play as a cute girl. And, um, obviously that's important. You play as a cute girl, just cement it. <laughs> you play as some kind of cute girl, and you play as a different character every single uh, game. And... You collect items and you use the items to build stuff. You're an alchemist, essentially. So you have to go through and you have to use alchemy to complete some kind of problem. And that's the main point of the game. And usually it's timed. Like in the first game that I played, Atelier Rorona, you play as a girl named Rorolina. And everybody calls her Rorona and that's why it's called Rorona. It doesn't matter. Um, essentially, her master is the actual alchemist of the town that she lives in, and her master's really lazy, and essentially just stopped working altogether. And now, somebody's looking to buy her shop and turn it into something else. And the king has told her, well, if you can't figure out a way to make your shop useful over the next three years, I'm gonna let this dude buy it and turn it into a coffee shop or something? I don't even remember what he was turning into. It doesn't matter. Um, so essentially your master says, okay, well I actually don't really want to work and this is a good time for you to become the main protagonist of a video game, so here, you get to do stuff. So essentially what you have to do is the king gives you a task every three months and you have to figure out a way to complete the task and also manage everything else because it's an RPG. So you have to figure out a way to complete the main task and level up your party members and complete quests in town and look for new places to uh, gather alchemy stuff and find ways to level yourself up and find ways to gather stuff for equipment. And it's a very satisfying gameplay loop that I enjoy a lot. Um, Atelier does not give the love it deserves. And uh, if you haven't heard of it before, you can get the original Atelier Verona for like 20 bucks now. So I highly recommend looking it up. Last question, guys. Will you ever do videos with your girlfriend? Also, when will you start streaming on Twitch? I've already done a Twitch stream in the past before. I think I did an Omnibus on it. For those who don't know uh, what the Omnibus is, I have this series called uh, Retro Omnibus. I think I called it, I think it's called the Retro Omnibus, where essentially I pick a video game console and then I pick a random game from a list of ROMs and every 10 to 15 minutes we just change which game I play. It's really great for people who are just coming into the stream because a lot of people don't, um, like, if you're, like, 20 hours into an RPG, like, they're so lost they can't really stick around and have a good time, but because we always switch games, like, every 10 to 15 minutes on an omnibus, um, you never have to worry about missing something. Like, no matter what time you come in, you'll be just as lost as everybody else, essentially. So, um, we did that on Twitch once, and that was fun. Uh, if I'm going to start taking this YouTube thing more seriously and trying to turn it into a career, then we'll have to look into Twitch streaming at some point because that's another place where you can get ads and make some money and stuff. So we'll have to look into that too. Um, I could do Twitch, but the thing with Twitch is you can't really do card games on Twitch unless you're doing like Hearthstone or like a video game based card game. So we'll have to see what happens there. I definitely want to look into it, but it's not something I've looked into so far. 
Now, about my girlfriend being in videos, probably not. My girlfriend was in one video, but I was very careful to make sure that it wasn't, like, her face shot in the video. Um, I've seen a lot of negative things happen to people who are associated with YouTubers when something negative happens around the YouTuber, so I don't really want to involve her too much, plus that's, that's such a hassle, you know? We only get, like, two hours a week to spend together as it is, and I don't want to spend those two hours working on a video together, you know? So maybe after uh, a few years pass and, like, we're living together, she could appear in a video or two, but don't count on it. I mainly count on just doing these videos by myself. Uh, the Twitch thing, though, uh, I am happy that you mentioned that, so we'll look into the Twitch thing, but girlfriend's a no-go, Twitch is a go-go. Now that's about it for this video. Uh, I don't even know if I'll have enough time to edit this before work, so it's probably not going to get on until the third. But um, as far as times go, it looks like it's going to be about 40 or so minutes. I told you guys so. Hopefully you enjoyed the video anyways, though. If you stuck to the end of this, thank you so much. You can prove that you made it to the end of the video by putting the name of a famous book in the comments. And then I'll know that you're one of the people who made it to the end of the video. And that'll be awesome. And I'll leave you a heart and everything. It'll be adorable. Trust me. So thank you again so much for stopping by. Uh, hopefully there will be some more content out. I do plan on getting started on the content uh, this weekend. So uh, again, Warriors of the Crystal, this is the next thing that's coming out. There will not be another thing on the channel until this comes out. And then after this comes out, we'll be getting started on Weiss Swartz and then MLP, then Metamorphosis. So if you enjoy it, stay tuned. Um, Shio Kosho, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about it, uh, feel free to message me on Discord or Facebook, and um, I'll let you know anything you want to know. Kudo After Hours will be a thing. Um, from now on, there will be no more video game stuff, no more anime stuff or anything on this channel. It will all be going over there, so hopefully you will support that as well. And yeah, I think I'm out. Catch you later, YouTube.